everyone, and welcome to another episode of Date with Diaspora, our quarantine in Diaspora series. We're so excited today, super, super excited, because we've got the stars of Cook Off, the first Zimbabwean movie to make it to Netflix. Woohoo! <laughs> so we have with us today Tendaiche, who plays Anesu, the lead female role, and then we have Tendai, who plays the lead male role, and Anesu's love interest, Prince. So Thank you both for joining us. Tanaisha is joining us from Zimbabwe. Tanaisha is joining us from SA, Joburg. So we're super excited and thankful that you guys took time to talk to us today. And so before we dive into everything, I want to know, can you all cook for real? Because... <laughs> because yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> okay, I'm asking this because there were some techniques with the chopping, with the flipping. I was like, okay, this is either them for real or they got some stunt doubles. Like, <laughs> tell us, can you guys cook for real? I can cook. I mean, you know how it is. Zimbabwean mothers teach their daughters to cook. Like, it's one of those, like, you have to have to be able to cook. So I can cook. Do I like cooking all the time? That's the question you should be asking me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, my brother is a chef, but I'm not really like a chef. Like I, I'm not like always cooking or anything, but I do enjoy cooking when I do. And I love food, good food. Okay. Um, I know Ten Tendai is always cooking and he's always on his Insta. There's always I'm food. not always There's cooking. Always <laughs> <laughs> is that right? There's no, I can cook on his status. <laughs> yeah, I can cook. I'm just not. I'm not like an incredible. I'm not like a chef type. But like, you know, I'm alive. I'm still here. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna be one of these guys who gets married because he's hungry now. I can. I can cook. Oh, wow. I can cook. <laughs> That's the hustle. <laughs> you know what? That's good because in the movie, there's a part where Anesu's cooking at the Dollar Sansa place. And the guys commented, they're like, oh, she's wifey material because she can mm -hmm. cook. And I'm thinking, all the men that are on the show who can cook, I'm like, that's hubby material. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> right? So that's awesome. Okay. All right. That's good. Well, I'm like, when the quarantine's over, I'm going to come to Zimbabwe and South Africa and get me a meal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I come through. I've got a favorite dish that I can just whip up and, you know. <laughs> I appreciate that. All right, so let's go back to the movie. So I want you to know, you see I have my natural afro out today. I did this just for you, <laughs> okay? Yes. I was watching the movie. I was like, oh my God, not only is the leaf, like, first of all, you're gorgeous. Yes. I'm saying she's dark skin. She has her natural hair and she looks so gorgeous and radiant. I just thought for me, like thinking back, you know, when I was a little girl, I would have loved to see that representation. So I was just saying mm. to be a, you know, a natural dark skin lead, how did that feel? And do you think it's groundbreaking and do we need more of them? Like, what what are your thoughts on that? Because I brought up the afro just for you, girl. <laughs> Thank you for the afro. I love it. Um, well, to be honest with you, representation matters a lot. Um, no one, no one can deny that. And um, what I love about Cook Off is that it's very authentic. You know, very, very like down to earth and just like it, it represents the ordinary Zimbabwean woman or even African woman, if you want to say it like that. Um, who's just living their lives. Um, and it takes us to like the ghetto area or like a less, not a flashy, fancy kind of environment where people are just kind of living to survive and living to, to do the day-to-day -day stuff. And I think that representation also matters because um, a lot of times, but you know, what I love about Cook Off is that it represents that aspect of, of Africa or Zimbabwe, but then there is that hopeful, lighthearted element to it. So it's almost like it's, 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 it's saying even the ordinary person has a dream and has, can fall in love and they can, um, they can have skills and they can compete at a certain level and they can win, you know, big shows or whatever. Like they just, it's like breaking the narrative of, ordinary African person in a box, you know, this is what they are and kind of showing the different facets and, and different sides to people that, you know, usually the layers that people usually don't see. Um, 
on on the news or something like that so that's what i love about cook off is that it's it's it just brings a different aspect to humanity in in africa and to zimbabwe i love that it's like hum- it's like humanizing the african experience letting you know that yeah. you're just like us or everybody else so i love that <laughs> yeah. so i have a question to ask tendai i wanted to know what was this on set chemistry like was it um <laughs> Okay, let me first ask about the cast and the crew chemistry and then, you know, any potential love interest, you know, that can happen off camera or what? Any tea to spill? <laughs> any tea. When you say Tendai, do you mean like me or Yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you try to cuz I cuz I never get asked this question. Oh, um, it's me. So thank you, Tina. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, so I, I, that's why I, I wasn't even. I was like, oh, this is definitely not my question. Um, <laughs> um, cast and crew chemistry, I think, was pretty was good. Cast and crew chemistry was good because it was a very small, um, a very small crew, like all, all together. I think just just under fifty people. Um, so we and we, we you know we weren't working in like a great big Hollywood studio, so it was a pretty confined space. And we spent a lot of pretty intense and important time together. So, cast and crew chemistry was amazing. Um, as far as the chemistry between myself and Tendi, that was amazing too. We um, we got on in- incredibly well. Like, um, I man, in just in my personal journey, I owe a lot of the person that I am, that I am now, and that I am becoming to some of the conversations and just the time that I got to spend with 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 Tendi um, on and off camera. Yeah. Um, yeah, we, we, we got on like a house on fire, <laughs> matching names, matching names. It does the thing, you know? Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> exactly. No, that, like, no, because it, it shows on camera as well. So con- kudos to you guys for making that seem so real on camera as well. Yes. Great acting. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> say congratulations to you guys i mean it's amazing when i heard when mutsa told me that oh there's a um a zimbabwean show coming on netflix i was like really you know because you see south africa you see nigeria you see all these other countries right and then when she said that i was like oh my gosh that is so exciting um i made my whole family sit with me and watch it yesterday it was really really amazing i mean i really liked the the authenticity of course i mean it was just the real zimbabwe that i remember growing up and so i can relate to that so that was a great okay. job with the producers tell them that we um, will yeah, yeah. <laughs> my question is for mr <laughs> tendy where is he <laughs> my question me. is um when you were playing the part of um at the dinner table first of all big ups to you for showing up to somebody's mother's house and sitting at the table with them <laughs> We do what we must. We do what we must, you know. I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> and, then, um, and, and your mom was a great character on the show, and you know, I loved her facial expressions because I remember mm. growing up with some of those, right? Mm. So when you were um, complimenting or asking that question, and she was looking at you with that side eye, you know, I was like, did you just really do that? To her? I mean, did you psych yourself up to play that part or to ask that question? Because later on, you know, you're going to be used as an example in people's homes. It's a I was playing that part. <laughs> you know, I think just as as um as a person, as a young Zimbabwean man, I am I guess I wouldn't say I'm I'm not very I guess I'm not exactly um your textbook was very culturally steeped, you know. I'm not very traditional in and of myself, but I you know, obviously I do respect and appreciate our culture. So um I felt pretty close to Prince, you know. That's my guy, the charmer. Um <laughs> it didn't take a lot of a lot of psyching up. I didn't really think like I didn't even envision this movie doing all that it's done. So now the pressure's on it's like I get inbox a lot and people are like, "Oh, where can we find more men like you and Prince?" I'm like, "Wait, Prince is a um Prince is a character." And um I'm just me. So I mean it was it there wasn't a lot of time to be um to to be afraid or shy away from any of the things we we had to kind of act out there because we were we were we we made this movie in a very short time period. So it was literally like, "Okay, suck it up. Let's go. Let's do what we must do and get the job done. 
it ain't good job. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, so I honestly, like I said, I love the movie and I need to know, is there going to be a part two? Because I have some questions. Like, I need to know. I need to know if there's going to be a part two. So if you want to start a, a, a petition yes. and a campaign with me, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm yeah, you guys should do that. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas Brickhill, the, the director, has spoken about maybe possibly having a part two. Um, which would be great, I think, because of, of the kind of attention we've been able to get. I think it would be great to have a part two. And I, I remember this one time, Tim, I don't know if you remember this, when he mentioned about how um, if he was to make a part two, maybe it would be like um, a bit more like a regional thing. So like a cooking show, but with like more exposure, like maybe she goes to the next, you know, the next level of competitions or something like that. Oh, like, yeah. Just, I you actually know? do not remember. You don't remember? But, <laughs> because I, I've been... Maybe, I've been, no, maybe he told look, me like last year or something. I don't know. Maybe I've, he told been, me. I've been sitting around like daydreaming about my own like sequel ideas, right? So yeah. in my mind, I would love for like the next installment of Cook For Off to become like a TV series. And then we can like uh, really, okay. really unpack it. But yeah. That would be I'm just keen. Yeah. I'm just. I'm just keen to see the, the the story. Um, I don't know, flesh out more. Yeah, that 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 would be awesome. Cause I had a few more questions, you know, about the uh, the father uh, to see what what, what, <laughs> what pans out there. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to ask the question to to Naisha about um, there was a scene towards the end of the movie where yeah. it's a mother-daughter dynamic that's being displayed mm -hmm. there. And there was a line where she said, to, where your character says, um, mom, we are not the same. Which for me was a verbal like, whoo, like that is like heavy. Like it was like heavy. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to know how important uh, and how impactful do you think showing that mother and daughter dynamic on screen in a uh, in an African movie, um, important for us culturally. I think it's very, very important. Hey, like, like what you're all saying. I know I was in the movie, but I relate to the movie the same way you all relate to it. You know, um, and literally, I think we we can all testify as women that there are moments when we're like, no, but mom, like things have changed. You know, or like you can see the aunts or or like the older women around you that you know, things have changed and, and oftentimes, I guess there's always that, that like uh, disparity or like a, a disconnection between the older generation and the younger generation and to show that you can have differences and you can have honest conversations because again, even in culture, you know, culturally, we often don't have these honest conversations about what happened and that confrontation, though it was a bit like messy, um, <laughs> But I think it, it did the job, you know, and if we can get used to confronting these these elephants in the in the room that no one wants to talk about or like, you know, address these attitudes that we have towards each other that haven't really been explained or put out in the open. Why do you act this way? Why do I feel like you don't love me or whatever? Like whatever the issue is, if we are, if I think culturally we need to learn to be more open and to to have these discussions hard as they may be. But I think they really bring us closer together. And in an authentic way, again, um, you know, I think after that discussion, like you said, if there's a part two, I'm sure they'll dig deep into that one. But, <laughs> but I'm sure like after such a discussion, you know, definitely you see each other differently and there's more empathy towards each person's journey, you know. Um, and yeah, definitely that line, like you said, very, very powerful. Um, we are all not our mothers. Sons are not their fathers, and daughters are not their mothers. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you had anything you wanted to also add tonight on that question, or uh, but I wholeheartedly agree uh, to Naisha about what you said wholeheartedly. Um, you know, I think. Uh, Look, a lot of the time, the the same thing kind of pans out between fathers and sons in Africa. Like, 
um especially if you want to go out there and like chase a dream or kind of go down the path the the unbeaten path that kind of thing there's just a set way that things are meant to go and a lot of the time i you know i believe the generation before us like tendi was saying does not do a great job of um expanding and explaining like why you know um i know for myself in you know in my own life there is so much that um my father tried to impart to me or has tried to impart with me that i only i'm only really kind of getting a handle on now as i kind of look back and kind of look at like certain gaps in my life or the foundation of my life like oh that's what you were trying to say and you know sometimes it just comes down to how these lessons are conveyed and they like i said that generation is not the greatest at trying to like really connect and convey these difficult and important lessons that need to to get across sometimes so yeah i completely agree <laughs> was the kissing real or was it like just <laughs> CG, cgi was it cgi i'm not in the movie <laughs> <laughs> so i was like is that kissing real <laughs> was it real <laughs> It was real. Okay. You know, I've, I've gotten, I've gotten, um, I've gotten, you mean real as in what? I mean real as in it was an actual kiss, not, uh, I don't know, I yeah. like um, <laughs> a rumor start. <laughs> um, but you know, this question has been asked by so many people. Uh, and I think it's so interesting because someone inboxed me actually and they said, Oh my gosh, I am so happy to finally see a real kiss in this love when we I was like, wow. That is interesting, you know, like it's it and again, I think it's culturally as well. Do we show affection to each other that much? I wonder actually. Like, you know, is 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 watching people be affectionate on on a show is it a normal thing? Is it normal in our culture for people to to show affection and PDA whatever it is? No, no, this is Santa Barbara. Santa. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess it it just brings back again just the same thing as representation. I feel like um because the kissing wasn't like hectic. It wasn't like anything like a non-under 18 or anything. But just the fact that people are like, "Wow, was that a kiss?" you know? And again, if we see this like at least nicely done, not anything, you know, under like over I was supposed under uh, 18. That's rated. That's rated. Yeah, it, as long as it's clean and it's it's fine. If we can see more of those kinds of I think images it will also maybe let people know that it's okay. You yeah. know, it's not like taboo to just kiss someone you like or love or whatever. It's not like, like a, a full a full and complete expression of our humanity, not just like and I, and I I think that's what happens a lot in the movie. Like we get to see more humanness of like some young African people not just like okay, cut away from the kiss or whatever. Like It's authentic. Mm-hmm. And you know, something else that's really um awesome about the film and about you guys in real life um is the fact that you know, you're pursuing careers or like ventures that aren't usually typical of what African parents want for their children, you know, as Bobby parents, African parents, um usually they're pushing for us to be those, you know, lawyers, engineers, doctors, all of those kinds of um careers and in the movie um you guys are in culinary arts and then in real life um you're both like in acting and in music all of that which is like so important because Zimbabwean people are so beyond creative it's like ridiculous yeah. so beyond creative i mean like just think about the little kids that you see on the side of the road who make those cars out of wires and all this mm. kind of stuff like the creativity in Zim is ridiculous so i wonder for both of you um what's it like to be in these positions to be in these uh not so super traditional type of like career ventures and what are your hopes for the creative arts in Zimbabwe both music both uh acting what are what do you hope to see coming out in the future for Zim arts Can you guys uh, Okay um <laughs> it's hard it's, it's it's really 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 hard and um extremely draining like emotionally and just it's a lot of energy on so many levels um you know as much as 
Zimbabwe is full, filled with so much talent and um, and um, there's a hunger for all the entertainment, like the music, the film and, and, and all of this. I think culturally and just as a society, there isn't that, like the perception is still kind of skewed. There isn't that much support. Um, so it's, it's, you know, it's a very, it's a very taxing road to, to travel, but um, also extremely, you know, fulfilling. So, and I, and I think what I hope to see is for it to be um, just not such a, not such a, such a, a struggle, just for there to really be like industries and really be spaces where if you're going to go out and pursue acting or go out there and pursue music or any kind of um, artistic endeavor, you do have a community, you do have an industry and a support system that's going to not only encourage you, but guide you and kind of, you know, help you along the way because, you know, because of the, the things that have gone on in the country and the way things have gone. Um, like I look at the film industry, there's a lot of incredible work that came out um, when I was a lot younger and then there's just this gap, you know? So it's kind of like every few years, even now it's like, okay, we're starting all over again. And the systems that should have maybe been passed down, the guidance, the mentorship that should have been passed down isn't just readily available. So it's, um, yeah, my, my, my greatest hope is that we, we can lay down some foundations that will actually last and then whoever and whatever comes after us has a place to start and doesn't have to start from scratch again and um, doesn't have to, because no matter what you do in life, it's going to be a struggle. It's going to be hard, but it shouldn't be the same struggle. They should be able to make new mistakes, their own mistakes, and hopefully unlock greater opportunities that we didn't even imagine ourselves. Yeah, just to echo what Tint is saying, it's, it's been, it hasn't been easy um, at all, but like what he said as well, it's very fulfilling. And I think the if, if we can just get um, support from, I, I always say, I think if people can just stop seeing the arts as an alien and rather something that can integrate into the economy in, a, in an effective way, because I think some countries have been able to do that. Uh, right now, if you think of Kanye West, for example, and the amazing stuff he's doing, he's just kind of, breaking a lot of barriers and boundaries, but it, he's actually rooted in music. Like that's how he started, that's his artistry, right? And just how empowered people can be through the arts. If we can have systems, I think, that really support the arts, people can get employment, people can uh, add value to the economy in amazing ways. Tourism will be boosted. If people see more positive images about our country, about our way of life, you know, there's so much that can be done using the arts and if people can just kind of look at it that way the perceptions of people if they can be changed to see the arts in that way i think it would make a big difference to anyone who's trying to tap into that career path um because like ten said sometimes you start off not knowing what you're doing like because there's no support system um and there are no people to tell you how to do it so if we could just have those support systems um, and get people more and more people on the international stage, because I, I really believe like what you're saying, there's so many creators, but rarely do you see our work on, on the international platform. Uh, and that's where the market is really. If you really want to make lots of money, you have to go global. And if we can have those kinds of systems that really like open up um, to the global platforms, I think would be doing such a great thing for talented people in Zimbabwe. And honestly, we can't stress it enough. Well done to both of you because you guys did such an incredible job with this movie. It feels so good for us because we're so far from home to see us represented again on an international level. It's so beyond exciting to turn on Netflix <laughs> off and you're like, what? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> and I'm sure you guys are going to be in those positions to be like those mentors and and mm. to be the people that young younger generation can kind of look up to and 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 reach out to to be like, how did you do this? How did you break it in, into these fields? So we wish you both the absolute best for everything that's coming in the future. We're watching. We're we're, we're super watching for part two. <laughs> if there's any petitions, send them our way because we will sign. <laughs> we will sign on the dotted line. Um, 
but yeah, for sure, we just wish you both the absolute best, and we can't thank you enough for taking the time to to talk. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you so, so, so much. So much.